see the man before who said he was O'Hearn's lawyer? Well, uh... But go ahead, speak freely. This is Mr. O'Connor of the Department of Justice. No, sir. I never saw Mr. O'Hearn's visit before. What did he look like? Well, medium, right? Tall. And he had a briefcase in his hand. <laughs> well, you see, Inspector, all I have to do is look for a man of medium height, tall, with a briefcase. Everybody in that jail must be deaf, dumb, and blind to let a thing like this happen. You can go. That gang's been knocking over small banks all over the city. I arrest one of them off. Get him identified. I put him in jail. And some killer walks in and murders him. Fine breaks I get. <laughs> Your blood pressure, Inspector. Now what do you want? The mayor calling. More grief. Yes, Macy speaking. Yes, but I realize the light this puts the department in, but I'm doing everything that I can, but now I've got him on my neck. What's that? That's the report I received on the bullet they dug out of our hand. It's a 38 caliber automatic manufactured by Royal. We should have somebody check with the Royal people, then cover all the pawn shops in town. I want all the information I can get. What else can I do for you, Mr. O'Connor? Nothing, nothing, Inspector. Your department, if you'll pardon the observation, have been a trifle overzealous. Listen, Mr. O'Connor, you're from the Department of Justice. You've been after these bank bandits for weeks. You find O'Hearn is one of the gang. I pick him up. And I'd have made him talk, too, if this thing hadn't happened. That's just it. What else could you expect? I didn't ask you to pick up O'Hearn. See, you work one way, Macy. The Department of Justice works another. I'd have been able to find the men higher up if you hadn't jugged O'Hearn. They didn't dare let him talk. Crack this gang wide open. Why, he... You can't get away with this. It'll cost you your job. Listen, you can't get away with this. Nobody in the United States can get away with it. We picked him off a train coming in from Frisco. Frisco? Certainly. I was getting off a train coming in from Frisco, minding my own business, and what happens? Forget it. Go ahead. See what you can do with him. Nope. Won't do any good now. He's your man, Inspector. You were O'Hearn's lawyer? Not this time. I was in Frisco on a case. Check on that. Yes, what sort of a case? A Chinaman by the name of Yang Fu. Shot his mother-in-law. Check on that. Did O'Hearn call your office? No, sir. Then who did O'Hearn call? <laughs> Maybe that was the Marines. Check on that. Get him out of here before I lose my temper. Hold him as a material yes, witness. Yeah, well, the United States will pay for this. You can't get away with this junk. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't get you. You wanted that lawyer picked up? Certainly, before you grabbed O'Hearn. Now that O'Hearn's dead, I can't do any good with his lawyer. All right, all right. Where do we go from here? Well, that, Inspector Macy, is for me to find out. So long. Hello. 
You look like the breakup of a hard winter. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Well, I feel like it. Move over, will you, Bobby? I couldn't keep my mind on driving after this mix-up. Why, what happened? I'll tell you. Hey, we'll just about have time to meet Kay if he'll step on it. Where to? The airport? That's right. Macy's destroyed every lead we were working on. fixed. He stopped too short. Put it on a cop. Big lug. Hey, I didn't know you two were in town. Look who's here. Well, if it isn't the old candid photographer himself, how are you, Bob? Oh, I'm all right. Hey, look, the plane's in. Some of the fellas down at the office told me the Mogul of India was coming in. Thought I'd get a picture of him. <laughs> That's me. Always on the spot. Hello. Yes. Hey, mister. No. I want to take your picture. I don't want my yeah, yeah, picture. Right here against the wall. Look, look, look. Don't go away. Wait here just a minute. Oh. Hey, what's the big idea, you... Darling, I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Jed. I'm glad to see you, too. It's been ages since we've been together. <laughs> Seems like it, doesn't it? And you must be Bobby Reynolds. Alan's written about you so often. Surely not Alan. You mean he put that in writing? Oh, I may have mentioned it once or twice. <laughs> and now I want you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Jerome Turner. Jerry, this is my brother, Mr. Alan O'Connor. How do you do, Mr. O'Connor? How do you do? And here's their... My co-worker, Miss Reynolds. How do you do? How do you do? And what do you think? He's an author, and he's going to write for the movies. What, no acting? Well, uh, not yet, but you never can tell. He was awfully nice to me on the trip. I've asked Miss O'Connor to have dinner with me tonight. I thought possibly Couldn't that... Couldn't we all have dinner together, Alan? Just a sort of celebration not of our all being together or something. I guess we could. What do you say, Bobby? Anytime you mention the word eat, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's fine. I don't care what you say. I don't want my picture taken. Mr. I don't want my picture taken. It'll only take a second. I'll, I'll have it set up here in a minute. I, I tell you, I'm not from India. I came from Jersey City where I got a fish market. But I tell you, the desk called... Oh, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, upstairs! Oh, oh. Help! Help! What's the matter, Bob? Having some trouble? Oh, that man. He says he's not the mogul. Who is he? Isn't he cute? <laughs> don't you call him cute. I saw him first. This is Bob, the candid photographer, and this is Kay O'Connor, Alan's sister. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> oh, my poor Bob, the world's greatest ladies' man. Wait for me! Some of the boys back east told me about it. Said it's one of the show places of Hollywood. Do the stars come here? I don't know about that. You see, I wanted to come here for atmosphere. Any line on the man who shot O'Hearn? Not a thing. The whole gang's in the clearing end. That leaves you right where you started from. Yep. Macy destroyed the whole line we were working on. Oh, well, let's forget business for a while. They make a cute couple, don't they? That sister of mine is a sweet kid, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She certainly is. It must be terribly thrilling to be a writer and get to go to all sorts of places after things to write about. Yes, I have been in a few tight places. Tell me about them. Some other time. You see, right now, I don't want to do anything to talk about you. Oh, 
time? Oh, wonderful. He's a grand dancer. Will you pardon me for a moment? I have a telephone call. Hurry back. I will. Isn't he wonderful? Now, look, sweet, I don't want to spoil your fun. Oh, I know what you're going to say, and I won't let you. I know he's a stranger, but I like him. And there couldn't be anything wrong with him, so there. And that's that. I give up. <laughs> Hello, Claudie. Hello, McGurn. When did you get in town? This afternoon. Nice little place you've got here. Thanks. Who are the people you're with? Friends of mine. Make friends quick, don't you? Look, Carlotti, you brought me out here to do a job for you. What I do or who I talk to besides that is none of your business. All right, all right, skip it. As you probably noticed in the papers lately, somebody's been knocking off a few little banks out here. Yeah, I did read something about it. We're getting tired of messing around with pin money. We want to expand a little. That's why I sent for you, McGurn. Okay, I'm here. What's on your mind? Have you ever been in Lone City, Nevada? No, it's a small burg up in the desert, isn't it? Yeah. It's a small burg, all right, but it's all set for a big take. There's a WPA camp up there. I've been working on the Grand Tunnel. I had one of the boys up there getting the layout. There's a $40,000 payroll coming in there, July the 10th. What are you going to do about it? The only place they can keep that money overnight is in the post office. Yeah, they got a jail, a post office, and a store all hooked onto one building. Well? I say, listen, any stoop can pick the lock on that jail. Say, you seem to know all about it. Sure, I'm the guy that did the chugging up for Joe. Was tossed into that jug a few weeks ago for being, what was it, Joe, a vagrant? Mm. Yeah, that means a tramp. You see, the sheriff don't like tramps. Won't let them stay in town, except overnight. And they have to spend that in jail. I see. Then all we do is get picked up for vagrancy. Yeah. See you later, Carlotti. <laughs> Here comes your author, kid. Sorry to have been so long. It's all right. Hello. How about giving me a break, Bobby? Some people are always looking for trouble. Well, I can handle it. Come on. I wonder. <laughs> Is all bottled up for the night? Sure. Can't nobody get in or out without being stopped. Well, good. I'm mighty glad you fellas helped me out tonight. You know, I wouldn't feel so good having to look after all that money in the post office by myself. You don't need to worry. It's just safe there as it is in the state bank. Folks are going to be feeling mighty good around here in the morning when they start to paying it all out. <laughs> Boy, this ought to be a cent. I told you so. <laughs> Oh, hello, Sheriff. Thought you were gonna forget us. Well, it's again my principle to be feeding tramps. But human beings is human beings, and human beings has got to be fed. Here's some grub for us. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. Hey, you're a good scout after all, Pard. Don't call me, Pard. I ain't no partner to any dead burned big ranch. Go on, eat that grub, and I'll be seeing the two of you in the morning. Okay, Sheriff. Pleasant dreams, Pard. <laughs>
tell the boys back east about this. They'll never believe it. What did I tell you? Well, 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 huh? This is the first time in my whole life that I've ever seen two tramps take the trouble to watch themselves. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Pard. Uh, here's your breakfast, and I told you not to call me Pard, didn't I? Oh, thanks for the grub, Sheriff. Well, I guess I got to be letting you two tramps out this morning. How'd you sleep last night? Oh, swell. Fine, fine. Huh? That's funny. You're the first one that ever did. You know, I've been wanting to change these mattresses here for the last two years. Must be awful hard and lumpy, ain't they? Oh, no, they're all right, sir. Oh, yes, they are, too. Oh, no. Just look at them there bumps. How is yours? Oh, perfectly okay, sir. Perfectly okay. Yeah, but it's the same way. It lumps all over it. You know, I'm going to change them mattresses right away. Every man's entitled to a good night's sleep. Oh, Sheriff, those mattresses are all right. Really, they are. If we could sleep on them, anybody could. By the way, when are you going to let us out of here? Well, you're free now, young fella. But just go on and eat your breakfast. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Well, then what happened? Well, I, I took a turn around the post office about midnight and found everything all right. Then come on back here to my office and sit down in my chair and I, well, I guess I kind of kind of dozed off after that. When did you first notice the money was missing? This morning. After I let them two tramps out, I took a look around and, and it was gone. Was this cell door locked? Well, certainly. Like always, leave it. You locked that in the outside? <laughs> well, as good those two fellows is in jail last night. They're the only two people in town that had a perfect alibi. Exactly so, Sheriff. They had a perfect alibi. You notice these scratches around here? My child could have picked this lock. Watch, and I'll show you how they did it. There. Well, I'll swan. 